Hello and welcome. You're listening to the fortnightly podcast of the University of Queensland's Astrophysics Group, where we broadcast up-to-the-minute astronomical news and research happening both within the group here at UQ and abroad. For more information, visit our website at smp.uq.edu.au or for all other inquiries, send us an email to astrogroup at uq.edu.au. Today, we're very excited to have Dr. Rob Crane visiting from Melbourne Swinburne University of Technology's Centre for Astrophysics and Supercomputing. He's going to be talking about what he's learned about galaxy formation by simulating their evolution using state-of-the-art supercomputers. So let's hear what he has to say. Okay, yeah, so I'm uh, Rob Crane. I'm a postdoc at the Centre for Astrophysics and Supercomputing at Swinburne University in Melbourne. And uh, I work generally in the, the field of numerical simulations of galaxy formation. And so my recent work is largely focused on looking at the X-ray properties of galaxies in these simulations and also uh, the X-ray constraints that we get from telescopes such as XMM Newton and the Chandra Observatory. So one of the things we've been looking at uh, in detail recently is to ask why it is that uh, simple analytic theories of galaxy formation predict that um, galaxies similar to the Milky Way, so sort of local L star uh, luminosity spiral galaxies, uh, we expect them to have very bright X-ray halos around them, so they should be emitting a lot of uh, energy from cooling radiation in the soft X-ray bands. And the satellites such as XMM and Chandra have failed to detect this emission. Uh, and in the cases where they have detected it, there's a handful of these cases, uh, generally that luminosity is about 10 to 100 times lower than one would expect from the simple theories that we have uh, at this time. So we've been looking at this problem with hydrodynamic simulations and we've actually found that there's no mismatch at all between uh, sort of the general predictions of the cold dark matter uh, galaxy formation theory. These are sort of in line with the observational constraints that we've got at the time. So we've had to revise the simple analytic theories which have underpinned a lot of galaxy formation for the last uh, two or three decades. Um, so that really shows the power of the um, hydrodynamic simulations such as the ones that we're using. So we have now have a good understanding of why uh, those analytic theories have sort of small inaccuracies in them and we are now able to refine those theories based on these computer simulations. The simulations we've been using to attack this problem are the Galaxy's Intergalactic Medium Interaction Calculation, or GIMIC for short. This is a, a large flagship project of the Virgo Consortium, which is an international group of uh, theoretical astrophysicists who primarily use uh, supercomputers to attack problems of um, cosmological relevance. Uh, so these sort of simulations, they, uh, they look at um, galaxies. Typically, you can resolve a galaxy with around uh, 100,000 elements, uh, gas particles in them. And so you can see down to a resolution of uh, a few kiloparsecs. So this is a fairly high resolution simulation for this sort of work. And we can follow uh, a few hundred galaxies at once with this resolution, which is sort of the real power of these simulations. You can make statistical uh, inferences from, from having such a large number of galaxies to look at. My primary collaborators are sort of people strewn throughout the uh, Virgo and Owls and Gimmick collaboration. So most of these people are based in Europe, uh, at Durham, uh, Cambridge, and also the Leiden Observatory in the Netherlands. Uh, and closer to home, I also collaborate uh, with people in Swinburne and also at UWA, uh, Chris Power and Alan Duffy are the main people uh, working with me at this time.